everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to get started on building up a Linux Mint Debian Edition 6 aka Fay VM and check out what the beta has to offer. Let's get right into it. New VM, give it a name, Let's put this at 122 OS. It's going to be the LMDE6 beta. We'll give it 45 gigs SSD emulation. We'll give it eight cores. And we'll give it eight gigs of RAM with a tw uh, two gig RAM minimum network. Confirm and start after created. Finish. And here we go. Well, okay. Um, so as you can see, one of the differences between this is the normal version of Mint is that there is no OEM install option, which is all right. Let's go ahead and start LMDE. And on the surface, it's going to look like your regular Mint. Even the install process is going to look a lot like your Ubuntu-based Mint. So we'll go through the installer and we'll see if we can point out a few things that might be a little different. Desktop is the same. Kick off the installer. This looks just a little different, but that's all right. English. Got the time zone correct. Okay, we'll do that. And select the disk. I'm not going to use LVM. It does give us a manual partitioning option. We'll skip that for this install. Yes to continue. Yes to continue. And that is fine. And the summary, and we hit install. And we're ready to reboot. Say yes. Go ahead and remove our ISO from the virtual optical drive and enter to continue. And in approximately 10 minutes and 30 seconds, we've gone from zero to the first boot dialog. So we can take a look at this. This is pretty much the same as the Ubuntu based version. Of course, we can change the desktop background, and they have many of the same wallpapers here. All right. So we've got some retro Commodore stuff here, the Commodore Pet 64C. It's all good there. Uh, let's open up the terminal, get a little bit larger. Okay, does have asterisks in the terminal by default. 
do this. Shouldn't be too many updates. Oh, we did get some errors. Very interesting. Failed to fetch packages from linuxmint.com. Uh huh. Interesting. But let's take a look here. Go to software manager, and this is their little store. And as you can see, got some different options here. Mint install 828. That all looks pretty normal. Uh, let's see what we've got under administration, disk usage and uh, analyzer, print settings, software manager, software sources. Okay. Main is going to be packages.linuxmint.com. There's a better. Aha, these are all showing unreachable. That explains why we got the errors in the terminal. What are we saying over here? Speed is zero. Okay, do we have an IP address? We do not have an IP address. So, that's going to be an issue. I wonder if we can fix this. So let's shut her down. Uh, I don't even see a network device listed. So let's add a network device. Bridge zero. Okay. It looks better. Is on vert IO. That should be supported by default. Wired is showing as active. Network settings. We do have an IP address now. So we should be able to come in here under administration and software sources. And take a look here. And we are listing speeds out, which is a good sign. And we are going to stick with that mirror for the main. And we'll see what we come up with for the base. Debian.org is going to be the winner. Okay to that. Updating cache. All right. Additional repositories you can add here. Authentication keys. Maintenance. Fix merge list problems. This is nice. Add missing keys. Remove, remove foreign packages. Downgrade foreign packages. Interesting. And run this. We shouldn't get any complaints this time. And that should pull down latest updates. And we should have a happy little beta system here. Now, it's probably worth mentioning that Linux Mint Debian Edition is it's a fail-safe plan. It's a fallback option if Canonical and Ubuntu start to do some really, really crazy stuff. And basically, the Linux Mint team can pivot and keep moving forward with minimal effort and minimal delay. Where this may lack some of the polish of the Ubuntu-based version, um, 
if you're more of a Debian purist, then this might be more up your alley. If you're a beginner, a Linux beginner, however, I would recommend starting with mainstream Linux Mint and not the Debian edition. Unless you already have some Linux slash Unix skills, this may not be the best place for you to start. But if you've used mainstream Linux Mint even for a few months, the transition will be very easy for you. Flatpak is in fact installed by default. The SS, open SSH server is not installed by default. NeoFetch is there. HTOP is not. So we're going to say get those two important packages installed. And on 8 gigs of RAM, we're using 974 megs. Get a little larger so people might be able to read it. Uh, it's ballooned up to 983 megs. Very, very low load on the 8 processor cords. 91 tasks, 205 threads. Not too bad. And as you can see from NeoFetch here, we're running LMDE6. Kernel is 6.1. Got 2,080 packages installed via dpackage. It's running bash 5.2.15. Cinnamon 5.8.4. Uh, list your themes and your window manager stuff. Uh, CPU is QEMU virtual version 2.5 plus. And memory is using 1002 megabytes out of 7940. Uh, Firefox is at version 117. That's not bad. Thunderbird, on the other hand, is on the old 102 version, which is kind of disappointing. And LibreOffice Writer, let's see what we've got here. 7.4.7.1. Uh, 7.6.1 is the newest version as of the recording of this video. Not terribly old, but not cutting edge. So the other test I normally do is to see how easily a given distribution finds and installs my printer. And so let's just search for printer. Okay, we're going to unlock. We're going to do add network printer. And right there we go, the 5370 brother. And forward, searching for drivers. And that works for this particular test. We'll print a test page. I hear that the background firing up, so we're good to go there. Look at properties for the printer. And everything there looks good. 
marker levels are not reported for this printer. That's kind of a bummer, but uh, that's all right. Okay, so we've got a printer installed. We've got... What do you all think? Uh, for a beta version, I think this looks pretty solid. I don't have any real reservations of running this on a physical machine for a while to do further testing. And in fact, we might put it on that B-Link EQ12 and 100 machine just to see how it runs. And especially compared to how Windows 11 runs on that machine, which is okay, but not great. Uh, given the lower resource overhead of Linux compared to Windows, I would expect this should do quite nicely on that machine. But for now, I think we've got a solid base to work with and we can build on top of this as we approach the full release of LMDE6. That does it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about LMDE6 beta and if the differences from the Ubuntu version is enough to make you try it or make you stay away from it. I'd be interested in learning more. And if you've got something special you'd like to see in a video about LMDE6 as we lead up to the production version, let me know that as well. And on that note, thank you for watching. Have a great day.